All right, so this is a little bit of a follow-up on the Scatterventure guide I made with the 9700X. I kind of want to just show how I can achieve also 6 gigahertz because this chip is actually pretty good. So I'll just walk you through all of the BIOS settings and then show how we get to 6 gigahertz. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load up this BIOS profile that I made for the E-Clock OC strategy, which is the the last OC strategy that I made for the for the guide, um, and what makes this uh, profile um, unique, I would say, is that we use this asynchronous mode. So that allows us to offset the frequency or adjust the frequency of the CPU cores by uh, adjusting essentially the reference clock. So in this case, we increase it from 100 uh, megahertz to 104.3. So we increase it by 4.3. Uh, percent. Now, to show 6 gigahertz, I'm actually going to change it to 105, which wasn't stable for my overclocking strategy, but it's going to be stable enough to boot in the operating system. And then the second thing we uh, have to do here is um, go into the Precision Boost Overdrive menu and set uh, or disable the CPU boost clock override, just to make it easier to boot in the operating system. And then let's just save this and go into the operating system. Now in the operating system, what we're going to do is I'm going to load up hardware info to show you what the effective uh, frequency is, the effective clock as well as the, the core clock. And then we're going to load up also CPUZ, the XOC version that we'll use to create a validation file. And then lastly, we'll use Shamino's work tool to do the actual overclocking. And the overclocking, uh, bear in mind, we're not just going to increase the frequency because we're still relying on the precision boost algorithm. So what we'll actually be doing is undervolting. So what we'll try to do is reduce the frequency or sorry, reduce the voltage of the highest VF points as much as possible so that they come within the range that the precision boost algorithm can select them. And then when we're idling and at the lowest temperatures, hopefully we'll see it boost to that frequency. Um, now we just have to wait a little bit for the system to reboot. The reason why it's taking so long to boot up is the memory training. So I loaded up the system with the expo timings, but actually um, my profile has custom memory timings. We use some of the ACES memory presets to try and also optimize the secondary and the tertiary timings. And it's a known thing with AMD Ryzen CPUs that training the memory just takes a long time. All right, we're booting in the operating system. All right, let's get started. So first I'll open hardware info and I'll point out a couple of things. So first thing I want to point out here is that so we can see the core clocks, which is essentially the frequency that the cores are configured to. And then we can also see the effective clock. Right, effective clock differs from the core clock in the sense that the effective clock measures the actual clock cycles as opposed to what the core is configured to run at. So what you can see is that you know the core is configured at maybe four gigahertz or up to 5.8 gigahertz, and then the effective clock is actually much, much lower than that. Um, let's also open up CPZ. Um, so I open up a, a folder here, CPZ XOC, and the main difference between regular CPZ and this XOC is that here we've enabled XOC. And what this does by enabling XOC, it will skip the stress test that it runs when it does the validation. So it really just um, measures or tries to capture the frequency. Other than that, it's, it's identical. So we close this up. We have this ready here. And then I also want to, um, oh, here I can already see a file. Let's delete this file. I also want to show the NotBench here that I'll be running. So NotBench, NotBench is an application made by Elmo Labs, and it essentially just runs uh, NOP instructions or no instructions over and over and over again. 
So you can see that it's tied to core one here, and that will give us an indication of what is the effective clock on the on the core. It's, it's not really necessary to do that for validations, but I like to do it for this video because then we can at least see what the frequency is uh, running at currently. All right, so let's go back here, back into XOC. So uh, the, the main uh, way of doing validation will be, you know, when we got a frequency, I'll press F7 on the keyboard, and then that will generate a file that we can later uh, upload. Uh, all right, so the next thing I want to do is open Shamino's work tool. Oh, go here. Yeah, and this work tool gives us control over the precision boost overdrive parameters. So we can set PPT, TDC, EDC, and so on, and then we can also set the curve optimizer. Now, the first thing that we'll do is we'll increase the F max, and you can see here frequency limit global. Um, it says 5,550. That's the default F max, uh, but we can also increase that by 200 megahertz and, and so set it to 5,750 megahertz. And you can already see that, you know, before the maximum clock rate frequency was about 5.8, and now it should already start um, increasing to maybe almost 5.9. So it's already overclocking um, a little bit. Now, um, if we uh, let's see if I can have the calculator calculator I do have it here um, the theoretical um, maximum frequency will be our F max um, multiplied by our increased reference clock so it should go all the way up to 6037 megahertz but you know let's see let's see if we actually get there um, so we set up all of our frequencies and now what I'm gonna do is do a curve optimization so I'll also check this one here so you can see it's running at 5.9 effective lock currently um, and let's just try let's say uh, minus 5 curve optimization so apply this we go here and then you know it's giving us uh, 5.9 gigahertz I'll create a validation file that we can later upload and then let's try 8 right apply and now we get a little bit uh, higher frequency, 5960, create another validation file. Um, and then let's try 10, see how far we get. Uh, 5970, just keep going. Minus 12, apply. 5984. Minus 13, 5993, very close to 6 gigahertz, 14, oh, shit, it crashed, okay, let's try this again, just reboot and let's try it again. All right, so we're back. Um, I went into BIOS and made a quick change uh, and changed the ref clock to 104.9. So we should still be within the ballpark to get six gigahertz. I just dialed it down a little bit because it seemed more unstable than it was this morning. Uh, anyway, let's try to do the same process. So we increase the F max to 5,750, as we can see here. Um, then we can also see that the uh, the core speed is running 5.9 something something and we'll try it to do exactly the same thing so we'll do curve optimizer um, minus five because it's five nine four something minus eight gives us five nine sixty something minus ten Gives us 5976 minus 12, 5980 minus 13, 5997 minus, minus 14 should be the one that does the trick. Yeah, and there we see 6 gigahertz. Oh, and now it's. Oh, you're back. So. I made uh, one more change, and that's that I switched 
to core two. And you can see that maybe this will give us a little bit more headroom because core two is already boosting to 596 when we haven't applied any curve optimizer yet. So maybe this one will give us finally that six gigahertz validation. Uh, so let's try again with the applying the curve optimizer and you can see at minus five, it's already very close to six gigahertz. I already saw six gigahertz. So let's do minus six, apply, and then, yeah. There you go. There we go, six gigahertz right there. We have a validation file. All right, let's uh, keep going. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. So I set a minus eight curve optimizer and we can hopefully get a little bit more than six gigahertz. Oh, no. Anyway, you can see uh, the validation isn't picking up on the higher frequency it kind of drops a little bit when we there we go 6017 let's go to 10 see how that goes oh we saw 630 yeah 6030 very good minus uh, to save minus 11 and then 6032 uh, not really that much improvement um which i guess kind of makes sense if we open up our calculator um you know then we'll see that it's uh, 5750 multiplied by 1.049 would be like 6031 as a maximum frequency so it's already kind of uh bo boosting a little bit above that um anyway so you can see uh, six six gigahertz here um and then uh, let's see if we can also show task manager. So let's move this up a little bit here and then we'll use our not bench and just assign it to different cores. So if I assign it to core three, for example, oh, that's another core running at six gigahertz. If I run it uh, on core four, uh, this one doesn't quite make it to six. And then if I change it to core five, that one uh, doesn't really make it to six either. Uh, core six, oof, we're very far away from six gigahertz there. Um, core seven, let's see what I can do. Not even, not even in the neighborhood of six gigahertz. And then um, core one. Core one is the one that we tried initially. You can see also barely making it to, to six gigahertz. Um, and then core zero ultimately, that eh, doesn't really get to six gigahertz either. So we have these two cores, core two and core um, three, that can boost to six gigahertz. And this is effective clock. This is not setting the clock at six gigahertz. This is actually running um, stuff at six gigahertz. So admittedly, we're running no operation, so it's a very light workload. Nevertheless, it is running at, at six gigahertz. All right, let's now go and try and validate this as well. So what I'll do is I'll just, yeah, back off here again, right? And then return this to normal, apply, okay. And then close up all of our applications here. Yep, and then we're gonna go in uh, to Windows and oh, sorry to the browser and then visit the validation website uh, i have this system not connected to the internet because this is technically a couple of days before the launch so uh, i can't have any of the scores leak online all right let's go back here so uh, first thing to make sure is that i'm connected to the database and you'll sh you'll see later on why that is important uh, but here we can go in select the file uh, our highest file 6037 then click validate wait and now we can see okay we validated our score at six six gigahertz but you can also see like okay all the other cores were about three gigahertz only the one that we were running NOP bench on was running at uh, at six gigahertz and now i will lock this score because uh, as you can see it's a little bit before launch two days before launch and we don't want this score to leak out 
and you can also see that I've had another, a couple of other 6 gigahertz runs as well. Um, this one here was pretty interesting. Uh, this is when I tried to um, run NOP on all of the cores. So you can see that all the cores were running at 5.8 gigahertz. And it was essentially the same process. I just had the NOP instructions run on every core except for, uh, instead of just running it on, on one core. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and lock this one as well. And yeah, there you have it. That's six gigahertz on the Ryzen 7 9700X. I thought it was gonna be easy to show you, but it turns out it was a little bit more work. Um, hopefully, you know, this was interesting. See you next time.